Well, I appreciate everybody uh, uh, coming today. I know, uh, you know, a lot of big announcements across the department. Uh, uh, you know, happy for, for Brad with his um, signee today. Uh, with our class, uh, another class I'm really excited about, uh, you look at uh, what our assistant coaches have done, and particularly Adam Christ, uh, as he's headed up recruiting over the last number of years. Uh, we've got a lot of, of guys that uh, you know, have gained national attention. Uh, that we've been able to uh, identify guys early in the process that are really good players that continue to get better. Uh, you know, we've tried to project them out. So this year we end up, uh, at least to this point, with a class of nine. Uh, we have five pitchers, four right-handers, a left-hander. Uh, we have two outfielders, uh, a catcher, and then an infielder. Uh, so you, know, you, you just look at the balance. Uh, we have some uh, you know, key people up the middle that we've signed. Uh, the pitching you know, portion of it is always imperative each and every year. Uh, out of those five pitchers, uh, there'll be a couple guys that we probably have to dodge a draft with a little bit. But you know, you have to do that in order to to get the right guys in here to compete at a high level. Um, you know, we we do have a local product this year with Connor Milton, and excited about him. And I know you know there'll probably be some questions about that. Uh, but you know, we, we uh, I feel like we have a, a lot of good athletes in this class, as we always do. Uh, some guys that uh, have great work ethic and. They've played for programs that are winning programs, and I, I think that's really important. If you get guys who've played for winning programs, they understand what it's like to play at a high level, play against very good competition, uh, play for championships. They come in with that mentality and that attitude. Uh, you know, it fits with with what we preached our guys, and and hopefully what we've been able to, you know, continue what we've been able to do in the past and build upon that. I can hear you. <laughs> Was Connor Milton no-brainer for you? Yeah, you know, so Connor's situation, uh, I mean, there's athleticism there. Uh, to me, he's probably the best uh, football player in the area, what, what he's done over the past three years. Uh, if you look what he's done on the baseball field, uh, it's just tremendous. And there's things you can't teach. I mean, the, the raw speed, uh, you know, the, the great body. Uh, and I don't know where he got that because his dad's not even close to that. But you know, you've got the the just the, the sheer athleticism. Um, to me, he was a no-brainer. And it's been interesting watching him grow up. You know, saw him as a young kid, and, and uh, you know he had the, the quickness and speed and uh, the competitiveness. Uh, honestly, the thing that sold me on him was his football. I love guys who play multiple sports, and and to watch him on the field and compete and the toughness that he had. And then watch that translate over to baseball. Um, you know, raw athlete uh, on the baseball field, uh, really improved over the past year and a half uh, as far as his offense goes. And I just think uh, you know he's got a very high ceiling. So looking forward to to his time here at Illinois. How did Connor's recruitment maybe differ from other guys? Just because he's literally in your backyard, and maybe because you've known him uh, quite a bit longer, probably than the, the typical prospect. It's more complicated than you think. <laughs> <laughs> so w with Connor's recruitment, uh, j just a number of things. Um, you, you, you have Howard that's in the department. And when you have a, a parent that's in the department, uh, to me, you, you really need to separate. And Connor had to understand we're, we're, we were recruiting Connor because of Connor. has nothing to do with the family. And I, I think you know, you have to help them understand that on both sides. And and I had the conversation that uh, Howard can, can still come to my office, but he can't come to my office as, as a parent. He's got to come up as, uh, you know, some someone we're dealing with some things with fundraising. But if he ever comes up to my office as a parent and I want to know about some things uh, from a playing standpoint or anything, I'm going to kick him out. So you, you've got that side of it. Uh, probably the side that, that – uh, most people don't know is he dated my daughter for a while. And so that was another portion we were going through it. So uh, during the time that we were recruiting him, um, I had one phone conversation with him, and the rest of that was done by the assistants just to try to keep that you know, clean a little bit. Um, and so it, it was an interesting recruiting process. Connor's a good person. And uh, you know he, he's uh, very good with uh, the communication side of things. So always enjoyed having him around and talking to him. 
Uh, he is not dating my daughter anymore, which I'm glad because that <laughs> makes things a lot easier. <laughs> Uh, but, it, you know, it, it was an interesting process, one I've never gone through before. And, you know, my, my daughter's a senior now, so probably won't have to go through another recruiting process with, with a boyfriend of hers. Dan in the back, uh, you already got Kellen on the team. What do, what do these in-city kids kind of add that maybe, I mean, I know it's nice to have in-state, but what, what do kind of that local talent kind of add to this program? So the, the local talent is uh, it, it can be tricky. It really can. Uh, I love having uh, players from the state of Illinois, which everybody on the, the uh, on this or in this group is from the state of Illinois, and that wasn't by design. It just happened that we were able to fill holes and and uh, get really good players in state. When you come to the local level, uh, if things go well, you get a lot of attention. If things don't go well, you get a lot of attention, and so it can be tricky. I think you have to find players that you truly believe uh, are going to get on the field so it doesn't get sticky. And I think you have to find uh, players that have a maturity to them so they can separate the hometown stuff from you know, the goals ahead of them. Uh, so uh, it, it should be exciting. Hopefully it brings fans into the stands uh, be, because there's a familiarity with the, the name and the uh, athleticism. Uh, it's not why we recruit them. They're, they're uh, with, with Kellen and, and uh Connor, they're both people that we think can help us win at a high level. Dan, um, how did Drew leaving impact this or the dynamic of that? What, what was that like for you once Mark came on board? And how did you keep the kids, you know, to keep on track? Well, so you know, Drew leaving that's uh, as part of part of you know guys moving on to opportunities that that uh, you feel are really good, and so I'm happy for Drew. Um, you know, he did a good job in the recruiting process with all these guys. And then Mark came in the mix, and his resume speaks for himself. And, and the only thing I've said to Mark is, thank you, thank you for not screwing it up. Uh, but M Mark's done a really good job I mean, from, uh, from day one as soon as he accepted the job. Uh, we talked with compliance to find out what he could and couldn't do. And uh, he got on the phone with those guys right away, started to work on the relationships. Uh, the majority of the, uh, the, those pitchers have been on campus uh, to meet with Mark. And, uh, you know, he's an impressive person. So done an unbelievable job in a short amount of time to start a relationship and to help those guys understand the quality of coaching they're going to get from him. You mentioned having some, some bigger guys in this class, and most of them are pitchers. Was that uh, something specific you were looking for you know, maybe at this point, or did it just happen that you got a bunch of six, four, <coughs> five, eight pitchers now? Well, the, the size is interesting. You, you get a lot of different uh, uh, opinions on size with pitchers. Uh, you know, you, you have longer levers and throwing downhill. Those are all things that some people like, yet some people say that when you get size, it's more difficult for them to repeat delivery. Uh, you know, so it's all over the board as far as uh, what the theory is behind big, small. Uh, we went after these guys because they're good pitchers. And we, we thought they projected out well. So did we go out looking for height? Uh, no, we just went out for looking for guys that would pound the strike zone and get people out, uh, guys that were winners. And so they just happened to be tall this year. You look last year, and we have some guys that, uh, that weren't quite as tall. Uh, you know, one of the better pitchers in the class, as far as pitchability goes, is, is a Hutchings uh, you know, pitcher. He's left-handed, and, and he's got great pitchability. And he's uh, the shorter one of all of them. You've talked about this before, but can you talk about how you approach today going in and then going forward with your kids that are going to get looked or and or selected by the draft? How do you approach uh, approaching them in the early period about what to expect with the draft? Here's what we want to provide for you. Here's how we'll help you, blah, 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 kind of that going forward. Yeah, the, the, the draft piece is interesting. Um, you know, I've always said uh, it, it's difficult to lose players, whether it's a recruit or someone's in your program. But if you don't have those players, you're not going to win. So it's just part of what you need to do is get those athletes that professional baseball wants. Uh, what we try to do is just educate them on the pros and cons. And there are pros and cons. Uh, to me, I hope education is really important because if you look at the percentages of guys that are drafted and then guys that make it in the big leagues and then actually make a living, uh, it's a very, very small amount. And so I hope guys will protect themselves from a, uh, an education standpoint. It's something that, that we talk to our guys about. 
Uh, but we just lay the facts out there, and then hopefully they make a good decision. Uh, you know, we, we got guys that uh, that want to be here at Illinois. Uh, it's you know the recruiting process is really interesting because um, you know sometimes you feel like you beg players, and I would say we recruit guys hard, but don't beg guys to be here because I truly want people that want to be here. If you get people that want to be here. Uh, there's a reason they want to be here, and we talk through those things. And um, I think the guys in this class will be uh, guys that, that will take a hard look at uh, the opportunity they have school-wise here. And you know, we, we've had success in the program, and hopefully they can come in and, and help us win another championship. Dan, I talked to Mark last week. Didn't get a chance to talk to you about him yet. Uh, so I wanted to ask you, he, he said, Building relationships with players was something that appealed to him about returning back to the college ranks. Um, how would you just describe him and how he build rela builds relationships? So I've known Mark uh, about a month, and I feel like we have a good relationship. Uh, it, it's interesting. Uh, part of the process to, to identify a pitching coach, you know, I, I went through the process of looking at people that were out there that I knew I've seen uh, ask assistant coaches you know who they saw out on the road that they really liked uh, look back at the people that uh, really pitched well against us and then I called former players or people I knew in professional baseball and the thing that sticks out to me about Mark is the fact that I had two people that I respect as much as anybody in the game that don't know each other that recommended Mark uh, and they told me that they didn't think we'd be able to move him. And they also told me, one of them, a uh, former player, told me if he was interested, hire him and you don't even have to interview him. And that, that held a lot of weight. Now, obviously, we interviewed him, went through the process, and, and found out a lot of things. Um, you know, Mark has a passion for coaching. You watch him as he interacts with the players, it's awesome. Uh, he's got a great sense of humor, he cares. Uh, he's just got that passion to be on the field. Uh, he, he had a, a highly sought after position with the Giants and, and he's had a lot of uh, uh, you know positions in baseball that, that are you know high powered positions. Uh, but the one thing he was missing is the interaction on a daily basis with the players and that's uh, what drives him. I, I uh, had an opportunity to meet with he and his wife, uh, sat down in a Cracker Barrel on the first meeting with him. We sat there for about, I don't know, five, six, seven hours. I don't even remember. I know the seat was hard. Uh, but we sat there in the first two hours. His wife was there, and I just told Mark, I, I literally, I just, his wife Angie was sitting across from me. I said, Angie, this is about you and me. I don't want to talk to him. And so we went back and forth, and the thing that sticks out to me and, and I'll always remember is, she said the void in his life, in his professional career, is the fact that he doesn't get to help young people anymore. And so I think it's genuine. Uh, and as you look at what he's done with our guys so far and the respect that he's gained in a short amount of time, it's really impressive.